Well, welcome everyone to our Thursday, September 24th meeting of the Irving Las Plinas Rotary Club. I'm not using this mic because we're getting interference, so I'm just going to project a little bit here. Stand with me if you will. Our invocation today will be led by Reverend J. Don George, our pledge by Superintendent Magna Fernandez, Neil and Sandra will lead us in song, and Rick Valenzi will introduce us to our visiting Rotarians and guests. Pastor George, come up here so we can get you on video. Thank you, President break. Robert. Yes. I don't mean to interrupt. No. Uh, I text Bill Abar today, uh, the same text that all of you got. Bill texted me back. He fell. He thought he wow. had broke his shoulder. He was at the doctor when I saw him today. Nothing's broke, but he's seeing an orthopedist tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we need to pray for Bill Abar. Mm -hmm. Would you we'll do, do that, that as well? Thank you. Our Father, we humbly bow in your holy presence to thank you for the privilege of prayer. You have said that we are to come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy to help and grace in every time of need. So we ask that you guide and direct our lives, particularly in this pivotal season of the political maneuvering. We ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will grant to each of us the mind of Christ, because you said in your word that we are to let this mind be in us, which was also in Jesus Christ. I pray that in the national elections, as well as area and local elections, you will intervene and you will cause your people to make wise and prudent and proper decisions. We pray for those who are not with us today because of sickness or infirmity, especially for Ken Lancaster, for the Reverend Bill Labar, and perhaps others whose names we're unable to call. Let this meeting today please you in all things and in all ways. We ask in the holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Thank you. Magna, lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our song today will be led, led by Neil and Sandra, uh, You Are My Sunshine. So words are on the table there if you don't know them. Pick it up. You gotta sing. You're in rotary. You are my sunshine, my holy sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know me how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The other night, dear, as I was sleeping, I dreamt I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. So I hung my head and cried. You are my sunshine, you my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Neil and Sandra. Thanks to all of you for singing and those online. I could see you singing as well. So, well, we've got a lot of 
guest in the room today, I'm going to ask past president and my friend Rick Lindsay to come to the podium. You got a list of all these people? Yes, sir. Are you just, yeah, all right. Hey. They're, they're, they're giving you a standing ovation. Well, right. I appreciate it, my President. Goodness. Awesome. It is my pleasure to be here today in person, and I would like to welcome a guest of Jordan also, Alan Payne. Hi, Alan. Alan, wave at us here. Stand up and wave. There you go. There you go. Alan, welcome. Uh, let's see. Oscar Ward, a councilman, Sunrise Rotary, but he, he's a member here also, Oscar. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Nicole said, don't introduce me, but after hearing her sing, we need her here every Thursday. So, Nicole, welcome. Thank you for being here with, uh, with Magda today. Uh, another guest of Jordan today, Brian Howard. Brian, stand. Hi. There you go. Welcome. Welcome, Brian. Uh, Melissa is a guest of Kathy Howard and me and Bob and the club. Melissa is the logistics distribution flag lady. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Melissa, thank you for all the hard work on the flags, all 1,556 or well, something. That's the what? right number, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Knetzer, guest of Robert Alsop. Sonny, always a pleasure to see you. Glad you're here. Good golfer. And Dallas Burke says new member, but I think he's good, been proposed yeah, by well, we're me. Getting, we're, getting, we're giving the benefit of the doubt. He'll benefit be of the doubt that he'll be approved. Dallas, Dallas stand up. You have, thank you for being here today. Mr. President, that is our guest today. All right. Thank you. Did we miss anybody? Well, let's give all of our visiting Rotarians and guests a warm welcome. Rick, stay up here with me. Well, uh, as most of you know, I try to make it a habit every Thursday to text a reminder about Rotary. Not that you need that reminder, but I just want to let you know where we were. Last week when I text, because we were going to be at Lasima, I got a text back from Jackie Knox saying, um, I'm retiring. Um, and I'm, I'm moving to the ranch in Mansfield and, uh, and I didn't know that. And I said, Jackie, you've got to at least come to Rotary one more time before you leave. And so, Jackie, I want you to come join me up here because when Rick Lindsay and I got together, I should more accurately say when Rick called me and instructed me on what to do because um, I, I need help. Um, come stand over here next to Rick since he was the instigator of this. Uh, yeah, six feet. There you go. Um, so, Jackie, we know you've been in this club since 2003. Um, we're grateful for all the things that you've done through the years. Um, and so as I talked to our past presidents, we just felt like um, we wanted to do, uh, as our Rotarians retire and sometimes shift over. Now, Jackie's going to switch to an honorary member. So you're still going to be a member of Rotary, still going to be a member of this club, but you may not seem maybe once a month or once a quarter. But uh, Jackie, we wanted to honor and recognize you today. And so, Mr. Lindsay, which I'm gonna turn the mic over to you because right, you have some prepared words, is that right? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you, Mr. President. And I do have some prepared words. Jackie, I'm gonna need your help as I try to tell this story. Uh, 227 miles west of here in Fisher County. Does anybody know where that is? There you go, north of Sweetwater, I think. Is that, are you a native of there? That's right. And the name of the town? Sweetwater and Roby. Roby, Texas. So 634 population, <laughs> I'm guessing one room schoolhouse? No, it's a consolidated school district. Okay. So it's bigger than that. Okay, so graduating class, how many? Uh, 32. 32, all right. So from there, where'd you go? To Cisco Junior College. Okay, you were the quarterback or fullback or quarterback. was it six man or 11 no, man? No, it was 11 man. Okay. I pick it on you. Jackie and I go back, back a long ways. Um, I'm going to read what was given to me. So Jackie began working for the developer of Las Colinas in 1976. But weren't you here before then? Now, 76 was when I started with okay. Mr. Carpenter. Okay, so you knew and worked for Mr. Carpenter. Yes. 
let me, since you've said that, let me read something here and get you to share. This was sent out by Mr. Carpenter. It says, it's a memo to his staff in June of 1974. So everybody who was in Irving, think back what this area looked back like in 1974. He said, we are merely the custodians of this property during its important stage of development. None of us can take it with us into immortality. So let us resist the attitude of some real estate developers in the past to squeeze out the very last short-term dollar. Instead, remember that generations of others who will make Las Colinas their home, both business and personal, will follow us. Let them look back and reflect on the fine effort made by those who were in who were its custodians during the development stage. Jackie Knox, that describes you. Thank you. Thank you. How did those words impact your career? As I as I look at this list that Dallas was nice enough to provide me with rebuilding the levees in Flood District 1, handling all the floodwaters north of 183, building the pump stations, overseeing. How did that statement impact your career? Tell us that right fast. Well, it was very impactful to be associated with things Mr. Carpenter was doing. And those words were, you know, those were constructed and fit together well. I can remember words he would say, uh, do it right the first time, you don't have to do it right, do it again. Or uh, you need to make that bull stout. And those were some of the personal directions he would give for things like that. So it's been very inspirational to see what's happened. Everything didn't happen the way Mr. Carpenter originally envisioned it but it happened the way the world developed around it. And so it's good that we have what we have. And uh, going back to Mr. Carpenter and all of his foresight and so much of the infrastructure and things that he did. So it was, it was a great experience for me. And uh, I'm blessed to have been here in Irving in Las Colinas uh, 44 years. Wow. Mr. President, if you will help me present this to Jackie, would you like for me to read it? I would like for you to read it. All right, I will read this. Uh, it's very nice, beautiful. It says, with deep appreciation, we honor and thank Jackie Knox for exceptional, exceptional leadership, attendance, participation, and 17 years of club membership for your dedication to the ideals of Rotary and unselfish service to our club and to our community. For always saying yes to leading the pledge, the four-way test, introducing guests, and singing with gusto, we thank you, Jackie Knox. Well, thank you to this club and each and every one that's been a member of this club. And uh, it was an honor for me to be uh, sponsored by John Boyle uh, to be a member of this club. And I'll never forget all the things that he has added to Irving and to this club and all the other people that I've come to know and respect and honor uh, that are in the Rotary Club. It's amazing what this club accomplishes with its projects and with its fellowship with each other. Thank you very much. Yes, you're right. Well, Jack, stay up here. We have one other thing we're doing. Do we? Oh, yes, God. we do. We're loading him up. Jackie was just uh, a little bit shy of attaining his Paul Harris Fellow. We had some points that were available to us that our secretary was able to have Rotary International allocate. So, Jackie, wow. you are a Paul Harris Fellow. There is your Paul Harris pin. Amazing. Here is your Paul Harris medallion. 
We want to make sure that uh, you remember your time in Rotary. We're grateful for your contributions. And at the end of the program day, we'd like to get a picture, all right? Yes. Thank you again. Please stand Thank you. And help me, help me. Great job. Thank you for coming today. You're yours. <laughs> Let me just say one other thing about Jackie. Uh, he's already proposed his replacement in this club. So, Dallas, stand up and wave at us. Uh, this is uh, uh, Dallas from Dallas County Utility and Reclamation District, going to be joining our club. Uh, he's officially proposed. So, hopefully, next week we will have him join us in membership. So, uh, Dallas, welcome. Jackie, thank you once again. Well, we've got a busy program today. Some of you have already, uh, we've kind of put you into action, but you'll notice in the back of the room, we've got uh, items that we're going to be bagging up, making hygiene kits for the homeless. And so we're trying to kind of do this social distancing, bringing a couple up at a time. But as we call upon your table, we're going to need you to go back around and do that. Shane, come on up. I'm going to let Shane give you some instructions on that. And then he's going to tell you a little bit about uh, our part. We've already sent about 100 hygiene bags uh, to the uh, hurricane. Um, I don't want to call them victims, but those impacted by the hurricane last week down in Louisiana. Shane will tell you a little bit about this. This was his and Jordan's idea. And so, Shane, welcome. Glad you're here today. Tell us what we're doing and share a little bit about what we've already done. Excellent. So, so first, I, I want to thank you for your help in this endeavor. Uh, we're excited uh, about the generosity of this club here and what we like together will be able to accomplish. So real quick, what we're doing in the back right now, um, our, our hope is that we can have five or six people at a time uh, rotating through um, if, if you're, rather than do it by table, since different people are finishing eating at different times, um, if you're ready and able to help us make some kits, um, if you would go back there and do that, take a turn, and then when you're ready for a break, come back and sit down. Um, about 200, is that correct? Okay. Uh, so, so we've already made 96 uh, kits. Um, we did those at, at my church and sent those for disaster relief. Uh, and now we're trying to uh, make as many as we can. We've already made uh, 40 kits back there. Uh, so we've got a good start. Um, and what we're doing is we're taking a gallon bag uh, and you put one of each item in it, except the last item is a bar of soap. And you can put three or four little bars of soap in there. Um, Otherwise, everything else is one. Right now, we're making female kits that give you a package of sanitary napkins, but once those are done, uh, the rest will be um, without those, and they'll be uh, for anyone. So hopefully, uh, there are people back there that have gone through a few rotations already, uh, so they can help direct you as we go. So I, I appreciate y'all's help in this. I thought this would be a fun way where we can have some hands-on experience uh, helping people and do kind of a micro uh, project uh, for our surrounding community. But I wanna talk to you now a little bit about what we were able to do um, already. Uh, so there was, we were hoping to maybe do some for disaster relief and some for the homeless today um, here at the club. Um, but we needed to get these out uh, more quickly than that. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, what we were able to do. So it seems like uh, not that long ago, but it was August 27th, over a month ago, that Hurricane Laura came through uh, the southwestern Louisiana and southeastern Texas. Um, and it was uh, one of the worst uh, categories to make landfall there in that area. I think the second worst, there's only one that's been stronger. And so we had a request come to our churches in this area uh, for help assembling these hygiene kits. Um, and uh, we wanted to try and make as many as possible. Uh, so they asked, could we do these kits for them on short notice? Um, and so uh, we put our heads together and tried to do what we can, but thankfully that was very much amplified uh, by the generosity of this 
Rotary Club. And so the disaster area was pretty prevalent. Um, and uh, there are a lot of people, the cleanup is still uh, not finished. Uh, it's been slowed down because they had a tropical storm just come through, uh, which paused uh, the supplies and the cleanup and relief efforts there. Uh, so that was unfortunate. Uh, so they continue to be um, in the early stages of recovery at this point. Can we hit the next slide for me? So this is just an idea. We go back one of uh, what happened around the Texas Louisiana border. Um, power lines, trees, houses, businesses, schools, um, pretty well destroyed. And the worst affected area was Lake Charles. And that's where our supplies are headed. Um, there's a, a FEMA base of operations there. Uh, and the kits were asked of our church and of our area through the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance um, organization, which is a nonprofit, most denominations, large denominations have something like it. The Methodists have uh, United Methodist Committee on Relief. Uh, the Southern Baptists have a similar version, Samaritan's Purse. Uh, these are all nonprofit uh, disaster relief helps um, that, that work alongside American Red Cross and FEMA uh, to help those who are most in need. Uh, so that just gives you a, a general idea of what happened there. Um, it's, it's extra sad because since the year 2000, uh, there have been a number of hurricanes who have come through there. Um, Ivan, Rita, Gustav, uh, just, just to name a few plus three or four tropical storms, as well as this latest hurricane. Uh, so it's an area that, that continually uh, gets uh, bad weather and there can be uh, problems with extensive flooding, even when they just get heavy rains. Uh, so, so they're a community that's continuing to have uh, issues throughout. So Jordan, if you'll give us the next slide. So at our church uh, this Sunday, we had an outdoor worship service, uh, a small gathering, and we invited just a small group of people, including some of our youth, to come inside and put these kits together. And so I don't want these uh, elderly and young people to put us to shame. There was only eight of us, uh, and we made 95 kits in about 30 minutes. So if, if they can do it, I think we can do it here as well. Um, and, and we just kind of went around the table putting in the supplies, um, and everyone had a hand in putting these kits together. And we made kits until we ran out of uh, the supplies that we needed to make a complete kit. Um, and that's inside our, our fellowship hall, uh, just to give you an idea of what our uh, church looks like and where that's taken place. So we had a small crew assemble all these kits after worship. So our club bought uh, the supplies that we needed to make these kits. Our church came up with about uh, 35 kits that people assembled in their home uh, that weren't comfortable coming up to the church. And so they made a number of kits. Uh, individuals and families made kits and brought them up to the church uh, so that we could send them off. Uh, but thanks to Rotary, we, we did about 35 of those kits uh, through our church families. Um, and then Rotary was able to triple that. So we did 96 um, hygiene kits um, because of the supplies that Rotary uh, paid for and provided. Uh, so we added uh, 35 to those 96. Uh, we had a nice offering. Now other churches in the Dallas area partnered with us, uh, different Presbyterian churches in Waxahachie, in Fort Worth, in uh, Carrollton, uh, and other places in the Metroplex, except for St. Stephen's in Fort Worth. Most of these were small to medium-sized churches uh, that had less than 250 members uh, that were getting these supplies together. And then we had a couple churches in Shreveport, which was the last stop, uh, and they were able to also provide kits uh, there in Louisiana uh, to take down south. 
Um, all in all, uh, we were able to do about 1,000 kits, uh, which was a, a pretty huge relief uh, for the efforts that they had there. Now, this is the second or third wave of hygiene kits uh, that they've needed down there because, again, this happened a month ago, uh, and, and they're still in need of supplies. Uh, and this was a special request. Uh, we haven't just historically to let you know they'd never asked of us to put out hygiene kits uh, all of a sudden like this before. So it was a special need that, that arose. And there's a picture of some of the boxes full of kits uh, that we assembled uh, as we were ready to load them up. Uh, and then the story got interesting after that. So we got all these kits ready to go and we we're excited about shipping them uh, to Louisiana. And initially, I thought we were going to have a team that was taking these down, but the team is already on the ground, and we had one volunteer that was shipping the supplies. So I thought, you know, they're going to have a big van, a truck, and this lady rolls up in her Hyundai Elantra. Now, I love the Hyundai Elantra that I have. I put more than 200,000 miles on it uh, before I finally decided I needed something bigger uh, with kids and all the accoutrement that kids inevitably come with. Uh, my launcher was just too small. So we had these all nicely packed in boxes ready to put on a truck or in a van. And then we found out that this was the vehicle that was taking our supplies down. So we proceeded to stuff them in grocery bags and garbage bags and fill the trunk uh, to its brim, fill the back seat uh, to the top, and fill the passenger seat. And so when it left our parking lot, we thought there was no, no room left. Well, they had another stop in Shreveport to make. And so in Shreveport, they stuffed even more in and they tied some to the top of her vehicle. And unfortunately, when she got to Shreveport, the tropical storm was rolling in. So the FEMA office and the disaster relief efforts were temporarily suspended. So she couldn't go down to Lake Charles, especially in her low-riding Elantra that was stuffed to the brim. And they, they did have about 100 kits that they weren't able to stuff into the car that stayed in, in Shreveport. So she actually had to go north to a base in Arkansas, a Ferncliff Camp and Conference, which is a disaster relief center for our area. Uh, and the good news about that is they had plenty of space to store this and they had volunteers to go through and check that all the kits were complete and if they weren't, add supplies to them uh, as they had those supplies available. So right now they're finishing those uh, final checks of those kits and hopefully by the end of the day those will be en route to Lake Charles because the storm just cleared up this morning. Um, so with your help we were able to do more than a thousand kits uh, to help uh, individuals and families in Lake Charles. Uh, so we do appreciate that help. And I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Jordan to tell you what we're doing today, where those hygiene kits will be going. Thank you very much for your support and your help in this endeavor. God bless y'all. Thank you, Shane. So next time, if somebody that has something besides a Hyundai Elantra, y'all can help us with the transportation. Uh, Shane's going to go back and help us supervise. We've got a group of you that are helping out back there. So thank you for that. Uh, the second part of this program is Jordan uh, Alsup is going to share a little bit about uh, really what he's been doing since March of this year, helping the homeless. And, um, and then I have a special request of you at the end. So please don't leave early. Jordan, come up and share with us. All right. Uh, Jordan's going to share a video that y'all online will be able to watch. And um, those of you in the room. While we're waiting for that to start, let me just call your attention to the fact when you get back to your table in a few minutes, uh, there is a copy of our new attendance policy. Um, we uh, made mention of this about a month ago. 
Uh, we're actually going to vote on it as a club today. Our, our board has already approved it. Uh, and it goes into effect next Thursday, October 1st. So chance to look through that. You can look through Brian Howard, Allen, and Sonny Canal, and myself sit on Jordan's board. Uh, so that's why they're here today. And uh, just to support what he's doing, you need me to help with that so you can start talking. Pulling the video up. How are we doing back there in the back with all the hygiene kits? All right. Those of you online, y'all can get a Ziploc bag. Go to your spouse's side of the bathroom, start pulling stuff that they don't use and stick it in the bag. And we'll have Jordan come by and pick those up. So uh, you're not laughing. That was kind of meant to be humorous, but can y'all hear me online? All right. All right. Bobby heard me. All right, Bob, I need you to go to your Donna's side and grab some stuff. Clear a little bit of room. There you go. All right. Crystal's giving us a thumbs up. She can do that as well. Um, we're going to make some hygiene kits that are going to be distributed as quickly as tomorrow. Uh, and so that's what you're doing in the back back there. Man, Rotarians are organized. Thank you for that. Are we close? It's just thinking about it. All right. It is. He says now, otherwise I'm going to tell another story, all right? All right, I'm getting notes down here. Uh, we're going to share a video here in just a moment. Here it is. Well, well let me tell you one other thing while this is loading. Y'all see this real nice banner here? This is District 5810 digital media award to the Irving Los Cleanest Rotary Club. Thanks to Jordan Alsup who has helped us with our um, website, our Facebook page. We now have a YouTube channel. Um, you know that if you've missed a meeting, you've been able to watch it online. All of you that are on Zoom today and able to see our meeting. Um, so we get to keep this banner for an entire year. I was told until uh, whoever wins it next year gets it. And I said, well, what if we win it again? We're just going to keep it, all right? So, uh, but we got this great banner. So I want to make sure that you were aware that we won that award. And uh, Jordan helped us do that. Do we have some sound to go with that? Okay. I'm going to stop talking and the video is starting now. Thank you. 
Well, Jordan's got a little bit longer video. We're going to let it keep playing so you can see Willie and the others that are being impacted. But uh, Jordan, come up and uh, tell us in two minutes what you want to do this weekend, all right? Talk loudly because most of them are in the back of the room. Yeah, for sure. And some of them back there, you know, they, they need to hear. So, uh, uh, yeah, so clean up again. Our mission is to provide a mobile services for those men, women, fatherless adolescents to have the opportunity to clean up. And so we will be taking an RV, a motorhome, just like what you saw in the presentation for the first time out tomorrow. It'll be out there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And we take it back Tuesday. Our goal is to have multiples of these um, out on the streets providing these services. And they're different than the uh, normal uh, trailers that you see where they'll have three or four showers inside. Um, our mission and the vision that was given to us was uh, to, if you're in a motor home, then you're inviting somebody into your home. And so I'm, we're going to treat them differently. They're going to treat us differently. And there's an encounter in a moment that we um, – are hoping that takes place. And if it doesn't, then we'll just keep coming back over and over again to service the community. So that's what we're looking to do this weekend. And we appreciate all you guys. Stay up here, Jordan. All right, so since May, uh, Jordan has uh, been uh, just communicating his desire to help the homeless and uh, literally has had hundreds of people that have volunteered to help in some capacity. One. Uh, during the COVID period in May, one uh, middle school girl just told her parents, I want to make a thousand sandwiches in a month because I'm not in school. And so her parents and her family made a thousand sandwiches in the course of a month. And Jordan would go by and pick up those and bottles of water and fruit and, and go out and deliver them to the families on, on the street. I've been with him and I've driven him before to uh, see how he interacts with them and how they they love on him and, uh, and value the fact that he's not just treating them like they're homeless, he's treating them like they're friends. Um, so his desire is to get this motor home. Now, he's been given money to help buy a motor home, but he, and not enough yet, but he really doesn't want to spend that money to rent a motor home because it was being given to buy one. Um, and so what I was hoping today is going to cost about $800 for him to rent this motor home for the five days. So if 40 of us were willing to put a $20 bill, and that's the reason why I had uh, Bobby pull the bucket back. Um, and some of you online, you can, if you give us a thumbs up or let us know, we'll put your $20 on your bill, or you can Venmo it to Jordan. Uh, but I sent you a text message saying, if you wanted to do this, now Rick Lindsay, I, I need kind of some official, cause I'm related to the recipient here. Um, could you come and officially uh, tell us what we want to do? Thank you, Mr. President. Folks in the back, I guess I would make a motion that this Rotary Club donate $800, either through uh, 40 of us at $20 or the bucket money or some of the monies out of the bucket that we, this Rotary Club, sponsor and donate $800. I think this program... Uh, very much falls in our community service avenue. And as I listened to the video and, and I've talked to Robert some over the past few weeks, I think it very much falls in the four-way test. I would like to make that motion. Second by Don George. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rick Lindsay. Here's I was 20 bucks. All right, thank you. I was uh, at the uh, hair salon this week. Yes, he is. Uh, and uh, you can just start collecting those. So if you brought 20 or if you didn't bring and you want to give it next week, Bobby's got the bucket there. We're going, Rotary is going to pay for that motor home this weekend, Jordan. And you should also know that all the supplies we're putting in today, Jordan purchased through his nonprofit because he could get them at a better price and get them shipped because we ordered them last Wednesday. They were delivered Friday so that Shane could take them to Louisiana on Sunday and we would have them here for today. So I want to say thank you to Jordan. We're going to write him a check to reimburse him for what he purchased there. But this is going to help be able to get uh, that motor home that you're going to get for the weekend. So awesome. you want to say anything else, sir? 
Yeah, thank you everyone for that. And again, we'll, we'll put another presentation together of the success and what happens through that. And we'll gladly be able to present that to you guys at a later date. And you got guys online, Bob Bourgeois and others that are acknowledging there. Thank you for that. Uh, again, for those of you that are watching online or those that may be watching this later, if you want us to put your $20 on your bill, you want to Venmo it to Jordan, uh, we're going to take care of the rental of that motorhome this weekend. I thank you at Rotary for doing that. We're a couple of minutes past. I'm going to adjourn the meeting. We still need to put together hygiene packs. If a few of you can stay, if you want to visit with Jordan, he will be here to, um, yes, sir. I got you at 240. We got more here. All right. Dr. Parr, if you'll finish that uh, hygiene kit, come forward and lead us in the four-way test. We will get a, we want a group picture in the back in a minute. We're going to do the four-way test first. You want to do it from there? Okay. Go ahead, sir. It's four-way test. Things they will do. First. Is it the truth? Second. Is it fair to all concerned? Third. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Well, thank you all for being here. Let me just remind all of our board members or Avenue of Service chairs, we have a, a board meeting next week. And while you're standing, I've got uh, just Bobby's waving at me. Um, I need a motion to approve our new attendance policy. Somebody? Uh, Don George has made a motion. Jordan a second. All in favor of our new attendance policy, say aye. Thank you, all of you online. Okay, you get credit online, so we appreciate that. Mara Gass, you look great there, all right? Appreciate everybody participating today. Uh, we are adjourned.